Hello, <coughs> welcome back. This is the third part of my Connect4 tutorial series in Java. Um, in the last tutorial, we discussed how the user entered a move into the console and how that input was stored by the program. Um, today, we'll, we, we will be covering this get row method. Now, the aim of get row is to determine which row the counter will be placed in. So like when you play a standard game of Connect 4, you decide which column to place the counter in. However, it's you know, essentially gravity and it decides where the counter actually goes in the board row-wise, like so where it goes within that column. And that's because if um that's because the counter will sit above any counters that are already within the column. So we're gonna replicate that by scanning the column in question and determining which is the lowest available slot um, that a counter can be placed in. So, uh, if I go down here, I will show you the get row method. It's fairly simple. Um, you'll notice it has a return type of integer. Again, fairly standard for this project. Um, anything that I've, I've tried to split things up so that any values that I'm creating or any um, calculations that need to be made have got their own method and as a result once the method is completed um, it will return the value that we need and it just it just makes things a bit more manageable you know it's it's easier to kind of understand where the different com like what each component represents and what piece works to you know what each piece of the program is trying to achieve so um you need the two parameters are the column parameter and this board parameter. So what that means is um, the column represents the move that the user has asked to make. And the board parameter is just the board within the constructor. Um, originally, I did use the get method. So I used the get game board to import the global uh, game board rather than using the local board within the constructor. But I think if classes are interacting between interacting with the program between the times that the user enters a move and the user uh, and the user's counter is placed, i.e. this function is access, this method is access, sorry, um, there's a possibility that with the other class interacting with it between those times it will change the global variable game board and as a result we'll have two different instances of the game board so that in order to avoid that if we use the same game board um that's being used yeah so the same game board that's being used within the constructor is also used within the get row method rather than having two different instances of it um i think that makes more sense and i think it avoids the risk of um what's the word that i'm thinking of it just the data becoming out of out of sync out of sync so you end up with two different versions of the same board that it is possible it could happen however if we pass it as a parameter that can't happen no changes can be made to this variable Hence, when it comes here, it will be exactly the same as when we originally get the game board up here. So moving on, um, again, just initial, uh, just declare a local variable um, to return the value that we generate as a result of the calculations done within the get row method. Um, and then onto the for loop. So like I said, the get row method, um, the aim of it is to calculate which y coordinate the user is um, the user's counter is going to be placed in so what that means is is that we need to loop through um the array to determine the lowest free slot now since it's a 2d array traditionally you would use two for loops so you would loop through y and then above this, you would loop through X. So you would loop through all of the rows and then all of the columns as well. So you would loop through every row within a column, which is what we're doing here. 
and then the loop, the row above would then loop through every column so that every single value is being looped through. However, since we know the column already, we can just place that column value within the x. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I say the word coordinate. That's probably not the correct term. Um, but I think it's a good way of thinking about it since it is a two by two grid. Um, but the point is, is that since the column has already been specified, we only need to loop through essentially one specific array within the 2D array, i.e. one column within the grid. Uh, moving on, this if statement is now going to determine whether or not a slot in the board is free. And this is fundamentally how we are, um, how we are defining the row how we are initializing the row variable, how we how we are giving that row variable a value. Because if the if the element, so say column, let's say three. So these entered the value three. And on the first run of this for loop, the y value will be equal to zero. If that value equals zero, then that is where the counter needs to go. Hence row will equal zero. And that is the function achieved. You now have two values, one for the x, one for the y, one for the, the column where the user wants to place their counter, and one for the row where the counter will actually end up. And from that, we can actually place the counter. Um, however, if this slot isn't free, so if the slot has, say it's player two's turn and the slot has... Um, player one counter in it this value here will be set to one and i'll show you that later but that's basically how i'm how i'm saving uh counters counters of player one are represented by one and counters of player two are represented by two and like i said if it's zero it means it's an empty slot so say this value here the bottom row in column three, so the central square, sort of the best place to go when you first start the game. If that slot is, um, is already taken, then this statement is gonna be false and it's gonna, it's not gonna do anything. It's just gonna go back round because that's not a problem. Okay, that's perfectly valid. You know, player one may have already played in that location or player two, whoever went first. And as a result, um, you know, we just need to check again. So when that happens, it, the y value is just going to increment by one, and it's going to keep on incrementing until it finds, well, until it reaches six. When this value equals six, the for loop is going to check it, and it's going to say that that condition is broken, that condition is no longer valid, and it won't execute. So three six will never execute, and that's really important because if it does execute, it will cause the program to crash since that value does not exist within the array. The, the y values are all numbered 0 to 5 and the x values are 0 to 6. So there is there are seven columns and each column has six rows. And if you go beyond that, you end up with an index out of bounds exception. Um, okay, so when, when this statement does ring true, so say uh, zero, for example, three zero, um, row is gonna equal zero. Since column is already a variable that we have, it's move, which we already have saved. Sorry, this is really bad. There we go. Move is already saved here. So this is already, this already represents the column value. So we don't need to return it within our get row method. It's just the Y value we're looking for. So we'll only be saving the Y value we will then return that to the constructor, and as a result, we will now have two valid coordinates uh, in order to access a specific element within the, within the 2D array, which will then be where the counter is placed. If this, um, if this loops through and it finds that there's no slots available within that column, then it's gonna return, it's gonna set row equal to 10, and it's gonna return that. So what does that mean? It's exactly the same as the get move method from the previous tutorial. Um, it uses the exact same logic as this, 
what it's going to do is if row equals 10, it's going to tell you that the column is full. It's going to skip the rest of the game that's the game's execution and you're just going to have to repeat the process. You're going to have to enter your move again and it's going to have to calculate the row which the counter is going to be placed in. It's going to do that all again. And if you, you know, if you pick a wrong column again, it's just going to keep going until, well, hopefully until you get annoyed and then enter a, a valid column. <laughs> You know, you never know. Um, but yeah, but basically the board can't go any further if the column is full. Because again, it, it would lead to index out of bounds exception. The, the sorry, um, yeah, no, index out of bounds. I think that's right. Um, anyway, it's basically when you go beyond the, the size of the array. So you look for an element that doesn't exist. And that causes an exception that causes the program to break. <sighs> oh. My apologies. <laughs> okay, so that is the get row method. I feel like that's probably enough for today. Um, in the next, in the next one of these, we will be discussing how checks are made on the board. It's fairly similar to get row. It's very similar, similar logic. Um, there's a couple of like user interface bits that I can cover, and yeah, and basically once that's done. Um, that is the entire of the of Connect Four. I'll give you a quick demo, and then um, that's everything. What we're we'll moving on to is the server. So you notice down here we have the input and output methods, all of this stuff which I haven't actually coded myself. This is a sort of a mishmash of I've half coded it and half of it I haven't. So it will be very much here's where I'm up to, and then here are the issues that I'm facing. So it's not going to be a, a proper tutorial in the sense I'm not going to show you a working solution because I don't have one yet. But I think that is enough for now. So I hope you've enjoyed and hopefully see you in the next one.